So in this next lesson, we're going to be taking a look at the uh, purchase order receiving process within X3. Um, so the purchase receipt, um, this is the step in the uh, order fulfillment process where the uh, warehouse personnel, um, the individuals in the warehouse record the receptions of the inventory um, into the X3 system um, against the purchase order. So to start off, um, I want to start off by showing you one of our popular reports that we have in the system that uh, many um, call it a purchasing manager or maybe a warehouse manager would run in order to get an idea of the um, orders that are expected to be received today. So here at our main menu, if we come down under printouts and then go to our prints by group, then we're going to come to purchasing, then down here to lists. And from the list of reports here, we're going to choose this option here, this receiving worksheet. So in on this report parameter screen here, um, it's going to be this expected uh, date range that we're going to want to set a cutoff value um, of today's date. So we'll go ahead and set our parameters, come over here and click on the print button. And when we click on print, that in part is going to generate this crystal report for us, the receiving worksheet. And basically this gives a breakout for you um, on a purchase order by purchase order basis. You have your PO number at the top, um, you have a reference number, the supplier ID, um, the date in which the purchase order was issued, you know, the associated buyer, um, if there's any acknowledgement information um, that was recorded on the PO that'll be presented here. Um, we have some general order status um, metrics here up at the header section. Then down here in the line section here you have all the product IDs on the PO, um, the ordered quantity. Um, if there's been any prior receipts against the purchase order that would be recorded herein. Um, we have the expected date of the receipt. Then over in this block here this is where a user can come to to write in uh, what the uh, receipted quantity was. Okay, so this is again we call this the receiving worksheet. So next here let's actually go over and take a look at how we um, issue a purchase order receipt in the system. So back here at our main menu we're going to come under our purchasing then we're going to come down to the options for receipts then to receipts We'll go ahead and choose our full entry transaction here. Then here at our receipts menu, we're going to start off by clicking on the new button. Then once we click on new in the receiving site field, this is where we're going to come to specify the warehouse into which the goods should be received. Okay. Once we specify the receiving site, what we can do is we can come over to our left list and go ahead and click on the order selection tray. And I chose a warehouse for which we didn't have any open POs. Let me go ahead and specify another site here. Let's see if we can pull one up. Okay, so site NA. Uh, 011, we had three open purchase orders. Um, one thing to note is um, basically when we record this receipt, uh, we're registering the receipt against a purchase order. So over here I can come in and click on you know these arrows here to kind of fold out all the products that are on the order. So if I wanted just to select one product, I could go ahead and just click on the individual box else if I want to select all the lines on the PO I can click on the box to the left of the order number then that in part will go ahead and register the um, purchase order details over here in my grid 
Um, another thing to note in here also is um, over on this options menu we have this selection criteria option. Now where this can be useful is uh, for um, a given supplier you might do a large amount of business and have um, you know many uh, open POs so this order uh, selection uh, tray could grow quite large. Well what you can do within here is you could come down in and <clears throat> on your supplier's uh, packing slip if they have the P your PO number registered you can go ahead and input the order number there um, or if you can identify a product uh, that's on the supplier's packing slip you could define that here in and once you set those criteria here and click on OK that's going to serve to whittle down your order selection tray just to those individual PO or POs that meet that criteria okay so I went ahead and I selected the PO that brought in my supplier number I have my date of the receipt um, over here I have my my from my suppliers packing slip if there's an identification number on there I can go ahead and record that we have the date from the suppliers packing slip that I can record okay you got the currency uh, valuation you know if there's any um, applicable exchange rates at play your exchange rate type is defined herein down here in our line section we have the PO number we have the line from the PO we have the product now one thing you'll notice here is the product ID here it's in red so that's communicating to me that I need to uh, specify some additional information on this receipt so that additional information could include a lot number it could include a location or, or it could include a QC status so I'll kind of come along the line here and see what I'm prompted for there's my quantity that's being received in I could go ahead now if this was only a partial receipt maybe they didn't send me all 10 units I could go ahead and mark 9 there okay to so just record this as a partial receipt here's our QC status okay over here in my location field I can go ahead and grab a location to input this product to okay so here's a register of my locations I can go ahead and click on one of those do a selection and that in part will mark my location on the record um, if this product was lot controlled I could specify some lot information in here okay serial number control there's a field in which you can mark the serial number or have X3 assign it okay uh, here on the line I have a close flag here so um, in this case being that I short received it I only received nine of the ten units <clears throat> if my situation was such that I knew that I wasn't going to be receiving that additional one unit on a subsequent you know shipment from the supplier I could go ahead and toggle this close field over from a no to a yes and that in part will close out the PO even though um, you know the PO hasn't been received in full okay you have some pricing information here on the line that's captured in if there's any discounts or adders you have your net price okay if you had some landed costing structures set up on the receipt those would be captured here in also okay so those are a lot of our primary fields on the line down here on the footer of the receipt record we have an indicator here if um, this receipt has been invoiced as of yet okay um, if the uh, receiver's been closed out if it's been posted to the GL um, if you printed out the receipt paperwork we'll take a look at that here next okay so let's go ahead and we're gonna click on the create button okay so we do our creation and that goes ahead and assigns it a receipt ID number now if we wanted to print out the receiving paperwork to pass that along to maybe the individual within the warehouse who's um, that needs to put away the product 
where also many organizations will print out a copy of this receipt paperwork and send it along to the accounts payable department so they have a document there that they can perform a three-way match against. So again, I'm going to click on the printer icon. I'm going to come down here and click on the record option. Then I'm going to choose this top option here for receipt notes. Okay. I'm going to let all the report parameters default and do a print. Okay. Then up pops here our receiving worksheet. So again, we got our receipt number, the supplier's packing slip, the site, the supplier, the receipt date. Down here in our uh, details section we have the products, the quantity, uh, here's your QC status, your location. Um, as I indicated before, if we have a product that's lot controlled or serial controlled, those particulars would be captured in here also. Okay. So finally here, let's take a look at uh, some inquiries uh, that might be of use to us um, when we're doing our purchase order receiving. So if we end out of the receipts here, um, and still under our purchasing menu, let's come down to inquiries, and let's start by coming over to, uh, in our orders section, this list of orders inquiry. So here under the list of orders, um, if I can come, if I come over to this criteria button here, you'll see um, as it relates to the receiving, I have a couple different parameters I can set here. So if I only wanted to see those um, purchase orders that I've already received, I can go ahead and uncheck the not received. Okay. Uh, vice versa, if I want to see those, in essence, those open POs that I have out there that I should be receiving, I can go ahead and uh, flag it as such. Come over here and click on OK and search. And that's going to give me a listing of all my open POs that are ready to be received. Okay. Uh, another useful inquiry that we have within here is uh, under receipts. We can come under this list of receipts and we also have the receipt lines. Uh, the receipt lines would be useful too if you want to see the individual product details. So maybe you're inquiring on um, as to whether or not a particular product has been received in yet. Um, this one right here, the list of the receipts, this gives you the header information. Okay. So in here again you can uh, filter by company, receiving site, your supplier. Uh, we have a date range over which we can inquire upon, you know, inquiring as to whether or not the receiver's been invoiced yet or not. Okay. And based upon however we set this criteria, this will go ahead and give you a register of all the receipts, along with, as you can see here, the particulars on the valuation, supplier packing slip details and the statuses. If one wants to tunnel back to an individual receipt from this inquiry, you can click on the action button at the beginning of the line, then come down here and choose the option here, the receipt, followed by the receipt number. Then that will go ahead and uh, give you the ability to tunnel directly back to the receiver. Okay, so that's it um, for the main principles behind the purchase receiving. In our next lesson here, we'll be taking a look at how, you know, the next step in the order fulfillment process of registering a purchase invoice against the receiver.